It's late September, but there are things happening in the Arctic that could flip this winter. We're looking at more snow already across Siberia, more than we had just a few days ago, and there's more in the forecast, not just here, but also starting to spread into North America. And we could be looking at our first real taste of winter temperatures across the West heading into October. A quick update on the ENSO outlook and a few other tidbits. We're going to start with the increase of snow that we've seen across the northern hemisphere this is 2023 the yellowish orangish color depending on your screen that's ice across the arctic ocean the blue is snow that has fallen across siberia then over here into alaska into the northern hemisphere this is 23 this is 24 this is where we are now a big difference even more than the winter weather update that came out earlier this week I'm going to be doing these winter weather type outlook updates at least once a week heading into the winter. I thought this was significant enough to go ahead and hit it early this week because I think this cold air that we're seeing will have a big impact on how our polar jet sets up as we head into the winter. And there are studies linked to especially October snow across Eurasia that indicates you'll likely see a weaker polar jet or polar vortex. And that means more waviness, more amplitude in your jet. And that means more outbreaks and maybe more storms. Clearly, the European Ensemble guidance shows more snow falling across the Siberia region when you take this out through October, with, of course, more starting to show up across the Northwest Territories and into the Canadian Rockies and into the mountains of British Columbia as we head into October, and some of that pushing down into parts of the West. And again, this is taking things out through October. It's using a bunch of different members, combining things. So this is really just a holistic look at where that snow may fall based on sort of the averages of what these models are showing us. This next map is very similar. However, it's a bit of a shorter range. It's based on the operational runs, but it's using about 50 different members. And it's showing you the average, or at least the probabilities of seeing more than an inch of snow. And we're starting to see that creep south also into the mountains of the west as we head into the first and second week of October. We've already seen some snow across the Rockies, and I think there will be a little bit more as we head toward that 7th, 8th, and ninth time frame, especially here into the Northern Rockies. And again, we're still pretty far out from seeing this snow. More to come on that. And I think this could be some of the coldest air of the season that will start to move into the West. It will modify as it moves further to the South and East, but, you know, hey, it's still October, guys. And with a weak La Nina, Still forecast to develop November into December and January. By the time you get to January, February, and March, you start to see this fall off and you get more of what we call ENSO neutral conditions. So you don't have a strong La Nina or a strong El Nino. And that's all related to those warmer waters in the Eastern Pacific. Well, La Nina means the waters are cooler than average. And that's what we're seeing right now. And if you were to compare this year to maybe some years in the past that started with a La Nina, then went to neutral you could compare it maybe a bit to 2008, but also somewhat to 13 into 14, and that meant some pretty cold air for a lot of the central and eastern U.S., a, a strong active Pacific jet moving in and then diving south, and that meant some cold air for a good portion of the central and eastern U.S. However, I would say right along the coast, especially as your storm track went like this, dumping snow back into this region a little heavier with this type of setup, it would be warmer right here along the coast just because you pull more warm air in and that's what happened this particular year. I can tell you there's some things in the Pacific that are also changing and some of this I think is in response to what we're seeing with our storm track. Now about a, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about how warm this water was off of the coast of Alaska. Well we've had storm after storm after storm just continue to pound this region and what that does is behind the storm it pulls in some colder area from the northwest. So look what's happened to the ocean temperatures here. We've actually seen temperatures start to cool off below average. However, you're still dealing with a lot of warm water just to the south of Alaska, at least southwest of the Aleutians. And I think that means more big storms as we get this area cold with snow across Siberia, also across Alaska. That huge thermal gradient, I think it's going to drive big Aleutian lows. It's going to drive huge surges of storms into British Columbia and into Alaska. Lots of precipitation as we head into the next couple of months. And now you're going to also get your dip in the jet. I think it's going to be an early start to winter as we head into November and December. It may start with a bang for the central and eastern U.S. and then back off. All of this, guys, is just guesses, right? It's the best guess based, based on some things that we're seeing. And clearly, look, 23, 24, and bang, now this year, there's clearly more snow across the northern hemisphere. And again, that could mean a weaker polar jet. You get pieces of that polar vortex that start to drop south, 
big storms, I think, this winter. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, come on, we're looking out three months from now. I don't have a crystal ball, but if you enjoy this type of outlook forecasting, I hope you'll consider subscribing and coming back. I do a daily forecast. If you haven't seen the latest, it'll be right here on the screen. Check it out. See you next time.